this was like torture and now we're literally the second we end this call we're gonna go i'm like going to buy a bunch of books right now Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I have a very special guest, as you can see, Jessica from Jessica's Bookstack of Instagram. Very excited and delighted to have you here today. We are doing our, I guess, what was supposed to be quite um. A repeated series but we haven't done one in a while but our boozy book chat so basically we pick a book that we both own we read it and then we come on the internet and drink and talk about it and it's really fun um there's nothing better yeah we've got a couple of videos that we've already made on instagram jess has one on her and we both have the first one on the, our pages and just as the other one, we read Fleischman is in Trouble and Eileen. So if you're interested in either of those books and hearing two slightly boozy gals talk about them, go and watch them. Um, on today's agenda, we have Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. This is my beat up copy that I had to- My very new copy. <laughs> I had to perform a surgery on this mid-read because it was basically falling apart. We are also going to be opening some gifts from each other. We did a fun thing where we picked some, we picked three books for each other, but we'll do it later on in the, in the piece. Um, I think first off, we should talk about what we're drinking. Yes. Um... I am a little boring tonight. Um, to be honest, I didn't have a whole lot on hand. So I have brought some classic red wine. You can't go wrong with red wine in a boozy book chat, I think. Feels very um, academic. Ac exactly. Especially with the exactly. card again that you're wearing. I don't have glasses but I could run out quickly and find a pair and then I think it might really complete the look actually. You would, you would have, we'd have a look going on. We'd have a look. I am drinking a mimosa because it is 8 a.m. here so breakfast. <laughs> the wonderful thing about our time difference is somebody is always morning drinking but uh, hmm. we take turns and that's that's you, don't, you, you normally don't do it this early, but I was like, I'm fine with drinking at 8 a.m. in the morning. I am not a morning person. And you were like, yeah, let's day. do it at 6. <laughs> like, it's been about, like, seven years since we last successfully did this. But yeah. we made it work now, right before the holidays. And that's what matters. Shall we get into we Gilead? Do? Let's get into Gilead. Okay, so we'll start with a little synopsis. What is Gilead about for those who haven't read it? Um, Gilead takes place in, essentially it's a fictional, I believe it's a fictional city called Gilead, um, which is set in Iowa. Um, and it is essentially, um, a 76 year old pastor, Midwestern pastor is writing a letter to his very young son at the end of his life. And reflecting on his life, um, the generations before him and the generations that come after him, um, kind of passing down father to son, father to son, generational wisdom. Um, and essentially it's, it's a letter that reflects his legacy, I would say. And it's a very, I would say, slow, quiet, um, reminiscing of like a, a, a Christian life and Christian values. Do you have anything that you would add to the synopsis that I didn't cover? No, I think that was really good. Should we start before we get into thing, anything with like initial reactions or responses? Yeah. So I definitely did not leave myself enough time to read this book thought it would be a one-weeker and things just got really busy in general 
And I did not think I was going to finish this book in time. Like I was Thursday, I was only 70 pages in and I was freaking out. Yeah. I was like telling you, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta hurry up because it is not a fast read. <laughs> I, I, um, I made the decision to be in it on Friday while I was working, listen to it on audio to try and get a bit more through it. And that was actually really interesting. So initially I found it quite slow paced and I guess just a bit of a chore to get through I think because I knew that there was a deadline Mm -hmm. I was just under the pump so I don't know whether I was taking it in as well I know I wasn't taking it in as much as I wanted to or in the way that I wanted to so decided to listen to it on audio and actually really enjoyed it so I read the first half like exactly the first half of the book And then the second half I listened to on audio. And I think it just allowed me to kind of um, get a better sense of the atmosphere. Um, I understood a bit more of the character, John Ames, who's the father. Um, And I guess a lot more of his feeling behind the things that he was saying that maybe I wasn't picking up um in the first part of the book I I think the first half is reflecting on like his childhood and and his relationship with his father and grandfather and then in the second half you kind of get a little more of the drama and the tension and the introduction of some new characters um so and and his response right in reaction to that which definitely gives him we see a shift in the personality for sure. So I think part of that does have to do with the book, but also I'm sure audio adds, you know, that extra. Your thoughts of initial thoughts. Yeah, so so this book was, I would say also a little tough for me. I think, yeah, when you said a bit of a chore, I also relate to that a bit. Um, it's just very different from the books I normally read for a few reasons. As I've mentioned already, like we're early on, but I mentioned multiple times, it is a slow book. It is what I would call a very quiet read. Um, I think you, the writing I thought was absolutely beautiful. There were like lines, I was like underlining and folding pages. You were underlining? What? No, you know what? No, you didn't underline. That's a lie. In my (laughs) mind, I underlined. You folded the pages. Yeah, I pulled the pages and I took pictures and I underlined the pictures. <laughs> so does that kind of count? Wow, yeah, that's, Renee, that's a, it counts for out. the Jess. That's a that's an underlying for you. You just called me out hard. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Beautiful writing. Beautiful writing. Um. I think you have to, or at least for me, I have to be in a certain headspace to read a book like this. And I was speaking to a few people about it who I think agreed. I, when I'm in like my daily chaos, you know, of like work and pets and your social, like you're just like a million things happening at once. This is not a book that really (laughs) meshes with that kind of lifestyle. I think it was not only slow, um, but it was also hard for me to relate, I think a bit content wise. So you know, lately I read a lot of like thinky women books um, that are a bit witty or ironic or, you know, making some sort of cultural political reference. And and this book is right from the perspective of like an old Midwestern religious pastor. I mean, there's not a lot for me to grab onto there. So like content wise and like the tone and pace, a bit difficult but the writing beautiful. So I'm a bit mixed. I don't know where I fully stand yet on the book. That's, that's my initial reaction. I want to go off of the, the religious tone, right? You mentioned the reference of a lot of biblical references. It's very much reflecting on his like Christian life and Christian values. And, um, I was, I want to like pose the question, do you think that this is inherently a religious book a religious christian book and the only way to maybe like fully 
lean into it or to fully understand, you know, what she's trying to convey is by having that kind of same Christian conviction or, or, or Christian upbringing or values. Um, because, or is it like a, or is it like a, a medium to convey something else, right? Like it's, it focuses on Christianity, but it's not really about the Christianity at the end of the day. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's really hard to, to think it's about anything else because it was so heavy in that way, like heavy in the, the references to sermons that he's done, like actual excerpts from sermons, um, you know, times where he would just start um, quoting the Bible. So it's, it's quite heavy in that I don't think you would need to have any kind of understanding or beliefs in what is being said, but I can imagine that anyone who had no kind of context or understanding of Christianity, religion, the Bible might find this really boring and um, confusing or just not having mm -hmm. any kind of reference for what was going on. I, I think I did look up Marilyn Robinson and I believe that she is quite like, I think she describes herself as like, you know, strongly Christian, not conservative um, and also a pacifist. Um, and I think that this book is really an ode of like her beliefs. I think it's like her way of putting like her beliefs down on paper. Like, I think you can appreciate what she's trying to do, but I'm not sure that you can truly connect with the like essence of the book if you're not like looking to read a book about like the beauty of Christianity in some way. Like, I think I didn't expect it to be quite so religious was interesting something I interpreted and I feel like maybe you did as well based on I feel like what you posted on Instagram earlier but was that it's technically he's writing a letter this whole thing is a letter to his son but it seems like the only person he's like obsessing over and spends all his time over is like his godson right and I feel like if anything like the son's son like has no part in this like he Barely spends no ever. time. He's mentioned on the periphery of like, he's watching him play and he, you know, is with his mother. But I don't know, it felt like a, what I understood is when he opened the book, this was a chance for him to kind of like impart some kind of wisdom to his son after he's gone and an attempt to be a father towards him in whatever way he could. But what I couldn't help but notice is that throughout the whole story, he barely interacts with him in real time. Yeah, there's no being a father. I can't help but think that when I imagine a book that is so um, religious heavy, because that role of a pastor is usually filled by a man. Mm -hmm. And I think that was another mm -hmm. an interesting thing that I found was that the character of John Amos replace a lot of that pastoral work with actual paternal work towards his own son. Do you think in order to write like a very religious Christian book, it almost like had to be right, like from like with a male protagonist and from like who's closest to God, right? It's like Yeah. I don't, I don't think it would have worked the same had it been mm -hmm. a female character. Like if you try to imagine the story that his wife would have written or this, the letter that his wife would have written to their son, it would have been completely different. This brings me actually to my next question. Would you read more in the series? I think I would, yeah. I I have Jack and I have Layla. Um, and then I think the other one is home. Mm -hmm. So I'd be quite interested to read from Jack's perspective or his story more. Um, I don't know if I'm all that interested to hear the wife story, but only because she we're given so little of her through this book that mm -hmm. she does seem like such a minor character. She wasn't really painted as this kind of interesting 
person. I, I don't think she was, yeah, we did get a lot of interesting facts about her, but I think there were teasers. I think there was like, there were teasers into the fact that she did have an interesting story. She has this mysterious life before she comes to the church that we don't know about. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> Liam, I feel like there's some there's some backstory. I sense a little something a little spicy or salacious in 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 what she has to offer. Yeah. Um, enough that I would read her book. I don't know. Jack seems the most interesting to me for sure. He's the he's the gossipy one, right? Like he's the one we care about, I think. Yeah, well, he was the one that all the commotion was made about in this book. So it's like, what is it with this Jack character? And I guess we have, we get a little bit more of that towards the end when it's kind of revealed more of his story. For me, jury is out still on whether, it's not high on, I think it's possible that I get to one of these other stories. I'm not running out, you know, I'm not running out the door to to buy them and, and push it to the top of my TBR. But at some point I can see myself maybe slowly finding my way back to this town of Gilead what's the general public reception I mean do people generally love this book does it is it polarizing does does it divide I think I don't know too many people that have read this book I mean we both know that the reason why I read this book was because Rebecca from Rebecca's books it's her one Mm -hmm. of her favorites I think she's probably bought this book she's the she's the evangelist yeah she is the pastor and we are eating up her sermon um oh, like <laughs> but yeah she's the pastor. <laughs> you're the antagonistic character who's like questioning everything she has to exactly. say exactly. <laughs> like, i don't know if it's that great but <laughs> how many how many stars I guess three and a half, which we've talked about me not giving half star ratings before, but I felt like a three wasn't Mm -hmm. quite enough, but it wasn't enough for a four for me. So I felt like three and a half was fair. I I think I actually completely agree with you in this case. I don't usually like giving halves, but it's more than a three because the writing is just amazing. But I really didn't connect with the story enough for it to be a four. So I felt like a three and a half felt felt right in this case. Hmm. So we decided that it would be fun to buy each other books because we are both quite enabling towards each other's book buying. We're, we're pretty good at like knowing what each other likes. Um, so we gave ourselves three kind of parameters around three books that we could buy each other. The first one was, um, I've completely forgotten already. (laughs) It was like, uh, one was a book that was under the radar. So one that we'd never seen on the internet, I think, like not really heard anyone talk about. Exactly. Um, the second one was a book that we've each read that we really want the other person to read. And then the third one was Wild Card, which was just like anything goes. And that we, we promised each other that we wouldn't buy books until we until this day, but both of us failed at that and both of us have, have at least ruined one of the book for each other. So yes. at least we're even. I... So the only book that I remember that I sent you is the one that I know that you... I have already purchased <laughs> okay so we've been sitting on these books for a while like two months I think yeah we've each had these books for ages and I can't believe that I've had books sitting on my shelf unopened for this long this is what's called self-control do you want to start or I'm going to start no with you start one. okay yeah yeah you start. okay I'm quite interested to open it and then for you to tell me what book it is because oh amazing Chelsea Girls by Eileen Myers Miles um I really wanted to read this 
So I'll tell you, I think I, I messed up a little on the categories <laughs> because when I, when I purchased this about two months ago, I hadn't seen it on the internet. This was my under the radar book. Okay. I like came, but then. I feel like I haven't then, seen this much either. It's not much, but since then I know for sure I've seen like two people post about it. And then yeah. I was like, shoot. But two months ago, I think I hadn't seen anyone post about I've it. I've actually, I listened to a podcast with her because um, she's a poet, but she has written like a whole book about this one artist. And I listened to that podcast and that was, she just sounds like a super interesting person. So and this is her memoir, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, just, I don't remember if Chelsea Miles just goes by they. Yeah, she, she's not by, oh, they are non-binary now, sorry. Right. So yeah, I wasn't sure. I wanted to double check they. So yeah, supposedly it's, it's their memoir of like being in New York in the like art scene in the LGB early like LGBT scene I want it I haven't bought it for myself yet but I want it it. but I thought you'd like it as well amazing I've heard it's excellent I really want to read it so yeah I've heard lots of good things all right we're opening my first one this is fun you know like I've never done Christmas um but I feel like this must be what it feels like to open Christmas presents. <laughs> I always find it really weird opening presents in front of people. <laughs> like, what if you hate it? Oh, this is the one I ruined. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. So this um, is the you book know- that I picked for you that was like a book that I've read that I really enjoyed that I think you should read. And you know what's so funny? I like would never have bought this for myself I I just remember I was like on book outlet and they had it there and um I had remembered seeing it referenced somewhere at like I couldn't remember who and I needed to hit the minimum for shipping and I was like okay I've heard really good things from someone yeah and I it's really a non-typical purchase for me so I'm upset that I ruined it but um maybe I'll say right at the bone Jacqueline Woodson I I think she's like borderline like YA. Yeah, this one's not so YA though. It's okay. um, yeah, I really loved it. Cool, fun. I'm excited. Yeah, I think it's a little bit outside my typical genre, but I have read. I see it's like quoted, you know, Candace Cardi Williams and Britt Bennett, which are also, by the way, two authors that I read. Also prior, I think, to really getting into bookstagram and shifting more into like literary space more when I read a bit more like contemporary, I would say. Um, I think you but, like it though. I don't, I don't think it's as like um, mainstream as it might seem. Yeah. No, I've heard really good things. I'm excited. I'm sorry that I ruined this one. I'm still excited. Okay, I'm about, I think probably soon I'm about to ruin one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you're definitely going to ruin one, so. <laughs> okay, so I'm opening this one now. Ah, this is the one that I ruined. <laughs> Hysterical. Nine Stories by J.D. Salinger. Is this a book that you've read that you loved? Yes, so this is one that I read that I loved. Also, like pre- bookstagram days I think for us to buy books that we read that the other one had in it had to have been books from before yeah. we had books because then we just merged right we became like one buyer <laughs> we, we bought the same all the same. Exact library so I think we had to go we had to dig into the backlist to find yeah. books so this I read prior to like bookstagram days I think I obviously I mean like most Americans I think were in Catcher in the Ryan high school didn't care for it too much. Didn't think to dip back into J.D. Salinger until a friend recommended Franny and Zoe, which is um, another short story collection. And I absolutely love Franny and Zoe, which led me into nine stories. And I just think, yeah, I love them. Like, I love this collection and it's outside of our genres that we co-read together a lot. So I thought it would be 
a little bit different. I didn't expect you to buy it, but then you surprised me and you did buy it. Well, I and it's a fuller version than I have. Yeah, I've been looking at this one on Book Outlet for a while, and I think it was a similar thing to you. It was like, oh, yeah. I need to like <laughs> buy another book to make it worth it, and so I was like, I'll buy that one. I've been loving short stories lately, so I'm very excited about this. Interesting that we both ruined the the no one we loved. Yeah. yeah. We ruined the same one for each other. That is funny. I now that I know I got I got the ruined one out of the way, I'm mm. I'm less stressed out, you know. I feel like this whole thing is like sponsored by like book depository. <laughs> so, challenge sponsor sponsor us. Go come for two girls who find it hard to get books in their country. Okay. Right. Oh my god. So true. Cool. I <laughs> actually so this. I'm not going to tell you. Um, Shirley Hazard. The oh, transit that's not the vision that I was hoping it was going to be. Oh, Book Depository doesn't usually mess that up. I thought it was going to be a completely different version, but anyway. Um, I Before I let, I just want to say that actually I was on Book Outlet recently and I added a Shirley Hazard to my car. I had never heard of her until really recently. And then I was like, stop buying, Jessica, stop buying but I don't know too much about her but enough that piqued my interest that I was like I feel like I need to read her so which one this is the um my under the radar so I've never oh, heard of her either and it was just through my kind of like online searchings for it and I think I can't remember how it came about I think there were names um, around her that I was like oh okay exactly you just have to reference you have to recognize the names around her and then you have like all the information that yeah you need. but that one and you sounds just, really good I can't remember yeah. off in my head what it was about so this one says it's an Australian novelist so from like your end of the world Mm -hmm. um, the story of two beautiful orphan sisters whose fates are as moving and wonderful and yet as predestined as the transits of the planets themselves that's heavy <laughs> wow <laughs> um it says it follows them they begin a new life in post-war england after their parents tragic death this feels like a war novel for sure from sydney to london new york stockholm 1950s to the 80s Two sisters experience seduction and abandonment, marriage and widowhood, love and betrayal. I'm excited. I've, I've heard really good things about her. And you just added one of her books to your cart as well, right? Yeah, I bought that really story collection as well. So, mm. yeah. Cool. Awesome. That, she's that literally someone that just popped up. Yeah. Cool. I'm excited. This is great. Does that mean we're both, the last book is the same thing it's the wild card the wild card okay. got the wild card now wow this, this is, is exciting <laughs> oh something new under the sun by alexandra Kleeman. i've been wanting to read this well i wanted to pick it up i actually tried to request this from the publisher and they're like no they're like no thanks like sorry um <laughs> thanks for sci-fi um I'll tell you why it was my wild card okay because I also just bought it for myself and I remember seeing someone review it like one of the booktubers maybe it was CJ and or, or a few people even said like I think it's just I, I heard it's a really interesting book that can spark good discussions and debates. Like, I think it deals with like climate anxiety and all sorts of things and it takes place maybe in Hollywood and LA. Is this and going to be our next busy book chat? So this is what I was going to say. That oh, I, think I love it. it. That we can make it our next boozy book chat. Book chat book. Exactly. Right. I would say that um, I haven't read a lot of books around climate anxiety, uh, but this one was definitely one that sounded the most interesting to me on that topic. So very good choice. I think it's, it's got a bit of that kind of, um, what sounds like drama aspect to it and the whole like Hollywood 
It sounds a little sexy. Like there's like yeah, some Hollywood. Yeah. It's like sexy climate inside. It's not, not so um, depressing. Maybe it is depressing, but in a fun way. <laughs> We're going to find out, aren't we? Cool. I love it. <laughs> It's climate anxiety, but fun and sexy. It's sexy. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm sad that we're coming to the end. Like, let's just do this I want forever, more books. right? <laughs> wow. All right. Well, the yeah, element of defense. Oh, this is the wild card. All right. Wow, I love this cover. And it's a Penguin Modern Classic, which I'm obsessed with. It so, is the collection yeah. of stories. John Rice. It one for two reasons. Jean Rice. Jean Rice. Jean Rice. I know how to say her name. Of course, we all do. <laughs> Jean Rice. And also, I know that you love those Penguin Modern, those are those specific editions. So I'm obsessed. I was trying to find something in that, in that collection that I thought you might not ha already have or might be interested so I I have never read anything by her I did buy Good Morning Midnight yeah um which is not which is her, a novel correct right correct right um so I didn't know she it's also wrote short, short story it's a short novel it's like a novella maybe even yeah um but I've heard in general she's like an incredible writer yeah um, I haven't read any of hers yet either but this looks awesome here are seedy hotels and bars in bohemian Paris ruin of ruinous love affairs Caribbean childhoods ex-chorus girls in London yeah all sorts of fun stuff I love a good like travel you know a place that takes me other places yeah cool and I love the cover it's so fun no oh, right Good vibes. So here they are. We did it. Books. Did we do good? Yeah. You did good. Um, did we are do good meaning what? Are you, no, I'm really excited. This was really fun and we should definitely do this again. Well, we've both got birthdays coming up in March, so. April, April. But we're Aries. But you're a March Aries I'm not, and I'm you're, you're Aries. Aries. Yeah. Which we've discussed. Let's do it. Let's do it again for the birthday. That's a great idea. Okay. Thank you, Jess, for, I've been calling you Jess this whole time and it's bizarre. Oh, wow. You said you were never going to call me Jess. Okay. Um, Not because I asked you to never call me Jess. No. <laughs> it's my own personal thing that I had. Thank you, Jessica, <laughs> for being here. It was a great discussion. Um, I'm really looking forward to the next one now. Renee, thank you so much for having me. You're so welcome. I'm looking forward and as well. For the books. I don't know, anyone who's read any of these books that we've gifted each other, thoughts on Gilead, thoughts on um, motherhood as well, because we didn't really discuss that much, but we would love to see you in the comments. Wait, can I just show you something before we sign off? Okay, what is this? Is amazing. Is that the, her picture? The, yes. <laughs> her author picture? I mean, do you see this? Oh my God. So, she is so amazing. I'm going to find that picture and I'm going to insert it on the screen because it is fantastic. Idol, icon. This is amazing. I and on that note, really thank you stop. everyone for watching. Um, we'll see you next time. Bye bye. We'll see you next time.